Lily, Julie and I are in the middle of something. Well, you can finish it as soon as I'm finished. Uh, Lily, I... Really what can I say? I'm my mother's daughter. I get to butt in once in a while. Alden, will you take Jack outside for a few minutes, please? Come on, Jack. Let's go. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't you think I would go with him if I could? What's stopping you? I told you. The last time that I was with Jack, I fell asleep. I had a nightmare about David, and I talked in my sleep. What did you say? Well... Nothing much, but I might the next time, so there cannot be a next time. It's too much of a risk. No, this isn't working. This isn't fair. Look, it's you. hard on all of us, but what other choice do we have? Go to Chicago. Have a wonderful time in Chicago. And what? He, he asked me to go up with him. It's getting kind of late. I say no. I'd rather stay at the bar. Or I go up with him, but I take my mouth shut. Julia, if you say something in your sleep, he's just going to think you're having a bad dream. I cannot believe that you're suggesting this. I mean... James is still alive. He's still a threat, especially to your family. You're in a bad place. I was in exactly the same place as you are right now, but the nightmares, they're fading. My obsession with David is fading away because of Holden helping me. And Jack, he could help you too if you allow him to, but if you don't, then David wins. Sorry, but he wouldn't stay put. David doesn't get to mess with our lives from under a palm tree a thousand miles away. I'm not gonna let it happen. Are you okay? What did you say to her? I just told her that life is too short and just to go for it. Thanks for everything. We'll call you when we get back from Chicago. Have a great time. I'm sorry, but we've lost our guest star for tomorrow's show, so I'm going to have to leave you two here on your own, and I will try to get finished in time to get back before you two are finished. Okay. Bye-bye. Good bye. luck. Bye. She's got the coolest job. Yeah. To have you on TV show. I love that shirt. Oh, thanks. I just, uh... Picked it up at the store in the mall called Fashions. It's really cool. They've got some neat original things, too. Oh, yeah, I think I've heard of it. I haven't been there yet, though. I'll have to check it out soon. Yeah, no doubt. You should. So what's it like to see your face on TV? Really weird. I mean, I had forgotten everything that I said, so it came as a total surprise when I saw it. <laughs> I'd love to be on TV. It's always been a dream of mine. Oh, what, to be an actress? Yeah, to be a, a star. I used to think that if I was famous and my face was plastered everywhere, then my mom would see me and she'd come back to me. Your mother? Yeah, my old lady. I guess, um, you didn't grow up with her? No, I grew up with a for real old lady, my nana. <laughs> but I don't know why I'm telling you this. You didn't exactly ask for the story of my life. No, no, I'm glad you did. Um, I lost my dad when I was a little kid. And I've never really stopped missing him either. It's kind of like this big hole in your heart, you know? <sighs> if I could just hug him one more time. <laughs> but you can't hug a ghost, you know? <laughs> nope. I... I know just, uh, I know how you feel. I, uh, I used to have this furry rabbit that somebody won for me when I was, like, five years old at this carnival. And I used to take his big floppy arms and put them around me like they were my mom's. And I never really knew what she looked like, so a furry rabbit had to do. Well, stuffed animals are good for things like that. <laughs> I used to pile all of mine on top of my bed when I went to sleep at night. My mom worked a lot of late nights, so, I don't know, they made me feel so, not so alone. <laughs> Funny thing for us to have in common. Yep. Sure is. Hey, you, you can quit for the day, right? All right, thanks a lot. Just look this over. When you're not over at Yo's, reading that book. All right, man. I'll see you in the morning. Okay. Dr. Ben? Easy. So, uh, what do you got there? New plans? Yep. Architect made the small adjustments we discussed. 
How soon can you get started? Uh, as soon as you want. About the church. Well, I told you, you know, I gotta split my time between this and that church project. I'm good with that. I just want Camille to be able to see the house, our house, growing, even if it's little by little, you know, kind of my way of showing her that I believe in our future together. Yeah, look, whatever makes Camille happy, you don't have to sell me on it, okay? I'm not selling you. I'm telling you what my thinking is so that you'll know what this house you're building means to us. I got the idea. Good. So there's something else. I'm planning a surprise engagement party for Camille. You know, we've been dealing with a lot of life and death issues the last couple months. Figure she's kind of cut loose, have some fun. Yeah, hey, I'm all for that. Yeah, and I want to give her a scale model of the house at the party. I think he might build that for me. Look, I, 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 I'm not really into that model thing, okay? So why don't you have the architect do it? Well, the architect's not available. Oh, man, I thought you'd be glad to do it. I mean, you got to know how happy it would make Camille. This house, something for her to hold on to, kind of stands for the future, all our happiness together. You know, I think about that every day, how I want to make Camille the happiest woman alive. Well, that's good, Ben, then. That's good, all right? You know, Camille deserves nothing less. Look, i got to look through this stuff, all right? Why don't I just get the schedule to you by tomorrow? Well, Brad, I can count on you to keep that party a secret, can I? Oh, look, I don't want to be a part of any more secrets, all right? The address is CBS. Welcome home. Give it up, Carly. John spilled the whole deal. Why would you ever listen to a snake like John Dixon? God, I hate that man. Forget John. This is about you. This is about bringing an innocent life into this world so you can get your hands on a pile of cash. How the hell do you live with yourself? You want somebody to blame for the mess you're in? Go take a look in the damn mirror. I'm sorry, have we met already? Well, no. I, I think I've seen you on TV before. Oh, that. You know, I don't like to make predictions. But I have a feeling that once you two get to know one another, you're going to find out you have a lot in common. Okay. So we got to clear this land ASAP if we want to beat the first freeze. Number one, clear land. It takes about a week. Number two, dig foundation for the basement. That'll be another three days. What's next? Silva. What's next? Come on. Do you want us to, like, pound nails for somebody else the rest of your life? No. All right, if you don't listen, you might learn something here. I'm, I'm sorry, what is it you asked? It's the list. See? And on this list, we have what we need to have done by when in order to have Ben and Camille's honeymoon house done by their 10th anniversary. Okay. That was a joke. Oh. Okay, so look. Clear land. Dig foundation. What's next? I don't know. I guess we... Or the foundation. Or foundation, that's right. That's another week, at least. What's up with you, Eddie? I don't know, man. My brain has turned to mush, you know? I blew it last night with that girl I've been telling you about. Big time. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Hey, look, I've been in the same place you are. As a matter of fact, I'm there right now. already. I didn't go anywhere. But your plans get canceled? I didn't have any plans. Julia told me she couldn't hang out with me today because she was babysitting for you. Oh. Well, I guess we got our wires crossed. No, your wires weren't crossed. She's been pulling away from me lately, telling me all kinds of things. Not hard to figure out why, either. It's David Stenbeck. The world turns. So did you guys find out anything new about David? No. 
Zilch, I mean. My guess is Big Daddy's got him stashed away in some Caribbean island. Something happened to Julia during the time that Dave was holding her, though, and... And she won't tell me what it is, so if, if you guys know something... Yeah, I mean, we've told you everything. I need some help here. I, I know you want to forget the whole thing, and I don't blame you, but... I'm at a loss, and I feel like I'm losing her. No, she loves you. And I love her. But obviously, that's, that's not enough. That maniac hurt her in some way, and I don't know if it's, it's too painful for her to dredge up, or she, she, she doesn't want to hurt me, or what. Maybe she just needs some more time. Things are going so great between us. I never loved anyone the way I love her. And tell you the truth, I've never seen her so happy. But then all of a sudden, we hit a wall, and I can't get past it. What does she tell you when you ask her about it? Uh, she makes up excuses. She tells lies, like today. Bottom line is, she's pulling away. So if, if you guys know something, like, did he force himself on no. her? No. I told you everything. David was obsessed with the baby. Julia and I, Carly, we were just nuisances. Then what the hell is going on with her? You know, she trusted me enough to tell me what is going on. I could help her get through it. I wish I could tell you what you need to know, Jack. Yeah, so do I. Because I'm running out of ideas. I gotta find some way to reach her. Hi. Hi. I'm staying. I just, I got a little gift for Hope in here. And I, I'll suck a toy in for... So, why don't you tell me how you blew with the mystery girl? I saw her again down by the river. I couldn't keep quiet, man. So I went up to her. She freaked, man. She took off like a shot. Well, Eddie, I mean, what do you expect? And she's out there in the dark. She's alone, right? And then she sees you, this Hulk, just lurking behind a tree. You know, you're staring at her like a bull in heat. I don't know. I know, okay? I don't know what I was thinking, man. I just... I wanted her to see that I was okay, you know? That I was somebody she didn't have to be scared of. Well, don't give up hope. She might not recognize you next time. Look, first rule of engagement. Try to play it cool. Yeah, cool, right? What, so cool she doesn't notice me, man? I don't think that's going to work. Not... Personally, I don't think it's going to work. That's not what I'm saying, all right? It's just that women smell desperation, okay? And that is just not going to work for you. And even when you get friendly with them, you can't just come right out. You, you can't tell them how you feel about them. Not until it's okay with them. <laughs> this you gotta trust me on. All right, man. All right, so what do I do? Well, get to know, you know, find out about her a little bit more. I mean, find out where she hangs out besides the river. Well, the only other place I ever seen her besides the river was Yo's, but I was there this morning, she wasn't. Okay, well, if I were you, I would go and hang out at Yo's more and they slide into a booth with a copy of Kerouac's On the Road. What's that, a new CD? Book. Oh. I never read it. Guess I got a lot of catching up to do, huh? Hey, look, you got a good mind. Maybe you should use it, you know? Eddie, women like guys that read. They, they like guys that think. You see what I'm saying here? Okay, okay. Even if you don't get the girl, you get a book to read. Good book. Right, okay. So I'm sitting in yours, right? I'm reading this Kerouac book. She walks in. What do I do? Well, this is how I see it. She sees you, good-looking fella, into his own thing. She gets curious. Maybe she strikes up a conversation. Are you kidding me? What? What if that doesn't work? Well, if that doesn't work, then we're just... Come back here again, and we'll have another strategy discussion, all right? Say, man, you got all the answers, don't you? Well, I do trust me. I, I don't even know what the questions are. Oh, well, we got company. Need a few minutes with you. Come on. Okay, you're right. I'm to blame for everything that's happened to me. I've been so stupid about so many things, but I have gotten the message now, Hal. And I swear to you, I was waiting for you to come home so I could tell you everything. Because John called you to warn you. If he hadn't, you would have kept right on playing me for a fool. You are not a fool. And I wouldn't ever think of you that way. I love you. Spare me. I know exactly what I am to you. A means to a $50 million end. 
It's more complicated than that. Oh, that I don't doubt for a second. I'm sure it's so common to even you have trouble keeping it straight. You know the sad part? I really loved you. Now don't do that. Don't you talk to me like this is over because I want to be married to you. I want for us to be there when this baby's born. Now, fill me in on a couple of missing details here. I know you had to get pregnant, and I assume you had to get married, but why, why the rush, Carly? I'm so sorry you found out this way. You had a deadline, didn't you? You had to get pregnant by a certain date. Otherwise, you weren't going to get the money. Rosanna decided to give you a little incentive, right? And I still can't believe my sister and could be... And that's fight. why you insisted that we get pregnant right away, right when we got married. Am I right? Hmm? I wanted the money for us. Now the picture is really starting to become clear. Okay, you had to get pregnant right away, so you decided you would pick out who? The guy that you could play the easiest? The guy who would fall head over heels, a hot blonde in the short skirt. I didn't pick you out. I fell in love. You fell in love with $50 million. You know, all those little inconsistencies that used to bother me like gnats, now, now they're clear. Now they're clear. I made mistakes. I made some awful, unforgivable mistakes. But I do love you. No man has ever been so kind to me. Or so useful. Get on us, Carly. If it wasn't for Rosanna's little jackpot, you never would have looked twice at me, would you? You are a wonderful man. Right. You know what I can't figure? How come you married me instead of Jack? I mean, you loved Jack. He was available. What's so the what the hell point in dragging up all this ancient history, because huh? Because Jack was laid up with a knife wound because you had to get pregnant right away, and he was still going to be in the hospital for another month. You loved Jack, but you settled for me. I hope the sacrifice was worth it. I thought you were babysitting today. Why don't we check on the kids? We'll be right back. Thank you. I'm sorry. I lied. I'm not mad. But how can I change what I'm doing wrong if you don't tell me what it is? You are not doing anything wrong, That's what you Jack. keep saying. But the way you're acting is telling me a different story. Maybe you needed more time. No. What I needed was you. I, I wouldn't trade that night for anything. It was perfect. Yeah, well, I thought it was the beginning of a lot of perfect nights for us. It was. It will be. When you stop having nightmares about David. I know. I I'm asking an awful lot. Oh, sweetheart. I am so crazy about you. You could ask me to stand on my head and recite Casey at Bat and Pig Latin, and I'd do it. Don't tempt me. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I want to do. Tempt you. Give me the shot. To stand on your head? No, to take you away from, f for a night, from anything that reminds you of David Stembeck. Mm -hmm. Now, we had a shot at our big date once. Remember at the top of the Sears Tower? Mm -hmm. Well, here's our chance to do it again. Just the two of us. High up, overlooking the, mm -hmm. the city lights. People around, but, but nobody knows us. Nobody bothers us. Just, just you and me. We'll dine and dance. Tell each other our secret fantasies. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. It will be. It will be, I swear. Come with me, Julia. Say yes. You won't be sorry. I would love to. But I can't. All right, that's it. Time out. Julia, stay where you are. Jack, I want you to step outside for a few minutes, please. What secrets are you talking about, Brad? What do you mean? Nothing. Look, I didn't, I didn't mean anything by it, all right? Look, I just, I, I got a lot on my mind, okay? Yeah, yeah, you had a lot on your mind the other day at the construction site. You and Camille both. Yeah, when I got there, she was crying. I thought something happened to her. You thought you had to take care of her like you did before? <sighs> is this a test? I mean, is this a test? Is, is there a right and wrong answer here, Ben? 
Not as long as you understand it's not your job to take care of Camille. I mean, not that I don't appreciate you helping her out in the past. All right, let's just drop this subject, okay? Because it's... I'm tired. I've been working a lot on this church, and now I got this new project I gotta worry about here. Hey, what, what, what worry about what? You give me mixed messages here, man. I offered you a job because I'm trying to help out Camille's good friend. I, I thought you wanted your house to be built, all right? Because I really don't need any help. Hey, I will tell you the truth. I didn't want to hire you. I just knew it would make Camille happy, so I did you a favor. Favor? Look, I don't need any favors. Why don't you just, look, have another damn builder build your house, all right? I don't need any help from you. Don't take this personally, okay? But usually, I hate people like you. Drop dead gorgeous and smart. Oh. <laughs> but you're not the average run-of-the-mill prom queen, you know? You're a real person. I like that. Thanks. I like you too, Georgia. I am so glad that Kim introduced us. I don't really know anyone here my age. Do you have a boyfriend? No. <laughs> How about you? Well, I got my eye on somebody, but so far he seemed to resist my charm. Oh, well, that's his loss. I wish. But he's one in a million. <laughs> well, tell me about him. Well, he's a little rough around the edges, but he's a total babe, and he's a complete gentleman. But the thing I like most about him is he's very loyal, and he'd walk through fire for you. Oh, I would love to meet someone like that. Well, with my luck, you probably will. <laughs> he really doesn't go for my type. He goes for your type. That's insane. You are gorgeous. I am not gorgeous. Yes, you are, and I would no. love to have hair like yours. Really? Yeah. That's sweet to say. Nobody's ever said that to me before. Well, except for my mean old aunt who I just met. <laughs> well, listen, I bet there are at least ten guys in here that would love to go out with you if you would just give them half the chance. But if the only one you want is this babe, I'm sure there is some way to get him to sit up and take notice. Maybe there is. Julia is afraid that she's accidentally going to clue Jack in about David. You having second thoughts about her going with him? No. Are you? No, not about them being together. But I keep thinking that maybe I'm making a big mistake here by not telling Jack. I mean, it's making both of them miserable. Yeah, but Jack, you know, Jack, if he feels it is his duty as a police officer to tell them, then... Yeah, then the cops dig up David's body, James finds out, and he comes after you and me, and the people we love. Forget it. Back to square one, I guess. Well, square one is not a bad place to be. Jack and Julia are happy. We're happy. We have two beautiful children upstairs who are sleeping peacefully. And hopefully your mother will send James packing. <laughs> Guess square one isn't so bad, huh? I cared about Jack, and I was confused. But I got over him when I realized how much you mean to me. Mm hmm And you realized this when? An hour ago? Two, maybe? No. Hal, when we got married, I told you that I was coming with baggage, and now you know what it was. Oh, yeah. A trust fund. Yes. And, and now that it's out in the open, don't you see? We're free. All the love we have, it can grow now. We can be so happy. No more curveballs? None. I swear. That's such a relief, Hal. I feel like such a burden's been lifted off my shoulders. You said you loved me. Now, that love must still be there. It doesn't go away that quickly. Just... Give me another chance. You won't be sorry. We, we can have a wonderful life. And once the baby's born, we'd be really rich. We can have it all. Well, how many times do you get a chance like this in a lifetime? I'm begging you. Don't throw it away. 
I don't accept your resignation. Uh, but we don't, we don't have to be friends. We don't even have to like each other. We just have to work together. No, we don't. Look, I do not need this grief, Ben. Neither do you. We need to work this out for Camille's sake. Why? 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 Because you don't want to tell her that you got rid of me? No, because you're important to her. She wants you to be in our wedding. And I just... I just want to give her what she wants. Now, no, it's not easy for me. And I don't understand what this thing is between the two of you. But I'm trying to do the right thing as an act of faith. <gasps> Gee, <laughs> that is real nobly. I don't think I want to be your cross to bear, though. Yeah, just do it for Camille. I'll build your house. All right. I'll be in your wedding. I'll even make a damn model. Just don't expect me to come to this engagement shindig and yell surprise. I'm just not in the mood. You're asking me not to throw it away. Do you ever visit the real world? Okay, I'm, I'm the villain. Okay? But people do change. Except you. You never change. You conceived this baby out of greed, and now you want to perpetuate the sham of a marriage for the same damn reason? That is not true. I love this baby with all my heart. The money means nothing to me without this child. And without you. Rosanna made me lose my first baby, Hal. Right, right, right. Everyone and everything else is to blame for all your screw-ups, Carly. Rosanna, your poor childhood growing up in muscle shell, John, the trust, the lie. I'm sure I'll be added to the list before very I'm long. not perfect. And I never said I was. But you tell me, what's wrong with me wanting this child to have all the advantages I didn't have? You grew up poor. You know what he can do to a kid. I'm not poor anymore. I can provide for my family. Will you start thinking about what's best for this baby instead of your own pride? I am thinking about this baby. I'm wondering what it does to a kid when its mother is willing to sell her soul for money. So, where else have you been in town besides yours? Mm, nowhere, really. I did have this one favorite place along the riverbed, but... Last time I was there, this guy popped out of nowhere and scared me half to death. I don't really feel safe there anymore. I miss it, too. I would go there when I was getting all stressed out, which I've actually been doing a lot since I moved here. You're stressed about school? No, home life, actually. Um, my sister and her husband are having some really tough times right now, and it just keeps getting worse and worse. It actually started when she wound up on TV and all over the media, tabloids, everything. Is your sister some kind of a celebrity or something? No, um... Actually, I might as well just tell you, you're gonna find out anyway. Uh, my sister is Detective Love. Whoa! Wait, Margot Hughes? Margot Hughes is your sister? Yep. Except it's all completely untrue. And the constant publicity has almost destroyed the family. Yeah, I know. I mean... Duh, so I've heard. <laughs> Wow, I'm really blown away that Margaret's your sister. Are you meeting someone, madam? Yes, uh, he wanted to come early. Snyder, Jack Snyder. This way, please. I don't understand. He left before me. Isn't, isn't he here yet?
it's disgusting what the media has done to the family. And I, for one, hate being in the spotlight. I mean, I came here to get away from all that, you know? Just to study, go to school, figure some things out. I didn't plan to do it in front of a live television audience. Well, you know what I find relieves stress is a little shopping spree. <laughs> yeah, but paying for it would give me a nervous breakdown. I'm kind of on a tight budget right now. I said a little spree, like uh, maybe buying a sweater like this or some shoes or a hat or something. Put it on your credit card. I find that always gets me out of my funk. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, that store fashions that I told you about is having like a, a huge sale, like 75%. Uh, uh, but I think it's over today, so you should, you should take off and go there. Well, if the bargains are that good, maybe I should go. You want to come with me? Uh, I unfortunately can. I got some errands to run. But tell you what, afterwards we'll meet up and we'll compare outfits. That'll mm. be great. That sounds good. Cool. Okay, you convinced me. I'm going to go to fashions and blow some cash that I don't have. <laughs> Gosh, this is so great. A new friend and a new outfit all in one day. Yeah. Things are looking up. <laughs> Friends make all the difference in the world, don't they? Yep. You know, you can just catch the bus right off the store, and it'll pick you up and drop you right off in front of the store. You'll be set. Okay. Thanks. Take it easy, girl. Thank you, Georgia. You Bye. Hey, how you doing? You know, you got a little something on your chin here. I think it's chocolate, so see it. You got it. You got it. Don't worry. Why are you here and not at work? Well, Brad gave me the rest of the afternoon off so I could look for her. For her? Oh, you told him about her. Well, you know, he could tell that something was a little off, you know? And you, uh, you haven't seen her, have you? Nope. Sorry, I haven't seen her. Okay. I won't ask for your love anymore. You're hurt, and you have every right to be. I just, I uh, guess I'm not cut out to be a wife. Lacking the gene, I suppose. And I know that you won't believe how sorry I am about that. And not just because of the money, but because of what I could have had with you. Don't overdo it. Hell, I want us to share this fortune. There's plenty to go around. You hate me if you want to, but don't you at least want to compensate yourself for the anguish that I've put you through? Well, now, that's... That's very considerate of you, Carly. So we stay together until you deliver the baby, and then what? We, uh, split the loot? What, 50-50, 60-40, 90-10? Whatever. Enough for you to live comfortably for the rest of your life. That's the problem, see? Because I'm not even comfortable thinking about this money. That money makes me feel dirty. Then you're going to do that. You're, you're willing to deprive your child of its rightful inheritance? You have no inkling how much I love this child. I know what it's like to be a father, Carly, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. This baby will not lack for anything that I can give it. But I am not degrading myself anymore. Our marriage is over. I'm filing for a divorce. We're through, Carly. Look, Brad explained it to me now. I've been going about this all along. See, I gotta be cool. Now, the less interested a guy seems in a girl, the more that girl is gonna want that guy. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Hey, Georgia, be honest with me. Do you think that, uh, well, do you think this girl's gonna like me? Eddie, any girl would be crazy not to like you. You're the best, kiddo. My best friend. Yep, that's me, everybody's pal. You know, Brad's right. You should, uh, you should just sit here and, uh, wait for her. And, you know, I usually don't make predictions, but I bet that your dream girl is going to come walking through that door tonight. You think so? Yeah, totally. You know, I'm kind of psychic about these things. Like now, so uh, you just sit here, and I'll see you later. Okay? took me so long to get back. Okay. Katie had to leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she went shopping. Did you two have fun? She's lovely, isn't she? She is, on no. both accounts. I Thank have you. a feeling getting you two together would be good for both of you. <sighs> she even gave me some advice about Eddie. Really? 
What? Well, looks like uh, Eddie's gonna meet his dream girl tonight. And you know who she's gonna be? Me. You're just saying that because you're mad at me. You wouldn't really deny our child this incredible opportunity. I don't quite see it that way. I see it more like saving this child from a delusional woman who will teach it to lie, cheat, and steal. You're crazy. You know that. If I, if I told people what you wanted to give up, they'd put you away, Hal. You can't leave me. Watch me. You've run out of luck, Carly. Your precious trust fund is walking out the door with me. Here's to us. To us. <laughs> you are going to make every moment perfect tonight, aren't you? Well, I had a dress rehearsal. <laughs> you know, the last time I was waiting for you. I am so sorry that no, I No, no, no. All's well that ends well. The last time when I was waiting for you, well, I kept looking down at the city and the streets. They just look so empty and lonely. Kind of reminded me of when I was working undercover here a few years ago. When you're one person one day and another the next, and the stakes are your life. If you get caught, you learn not to trust anybody but yourself. You gave me the best gift anyone can give. You opened me up and you taught me how to feel again. You taught me how to love. Jack, I have been waiting my whole life to hear someone say that to me, to, to feel this way. I just... I know. How do you know that? Because of the way she smiles at us. Mm -hmm. She even winked at me the other day. Did you wink at Daddy? <laughs> oh, she's so beautiful. She's so smart. Yes. Oh, your mama was out of it for a while. I actually convinced myself that you weren't ours. I'm sorry I put you and the baby through that. You don't have to apologize for that. She knows that you're going to be a good mama. Right? She smiles mm -hmm, so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I don't think anything could change how happy I am right now. Feels like for months and months we were going through this dark tunnel and finally we got to the end where there was some light. Oh. <laughs> it was so beautiful there. Yeah. I never ever want to go back to that dark place again. 